Hello and welcome to the solution video for spicy question number 19. In this question we're going back in time to the year 1995 and we have a brand new car with a sale price of £39,500. The car is going to depreciate in value over time at a fixed percentage per year and we're also told the value of the car in 1998. Between 1995 and 1998 there's three years so we must have applied this fixed percentage three times. So if we take the value of the car in 1995 at the start, which is £39,500, and multiply it by this fixed rate three times, we would end up with 20224 I'm going to call this fixed rate K since we don't know what it is, and if we're going to multiply it by K three times, that's the same as multiplying by K cubed. So if we do this times K cubed, we'd end up with £20,224. We can now solve this to find the value of K, so if we divide both sides by £39,500, we get k cubed equals this. And you can type that into your calculator and you'll get k cubed equals 0 0.512. To find the value of k, you cube root both sides, and that gives you k equals 0 0.8. You should recognise this multiplier of 0 0.8 as a 20% depreciation per year. So we now know the car will depreciate at a rate of 20% per year. Now we're also told in the question that Kevin wants to buy the car but he doesn't have enough money, so he's going to have to save instead. He invests £5,885 into a bank with 5% compound interest. So this is back in 1995. Now we already know the value of the car in 1998, it's £20,224. So let's see if Kevin's investment will take us to that value and therefore he'll be able to buy the car in 1998. So in 1998, Kevin's investment will have been in its bank for 3 years, so we'll take his money, £5,885, multiply it by 1.05 for a 5% compound interest, to the power 3 for the 3 years between 95 and 98. This gives you a value of £6,812.62. But we know the car's value is £20,224 at that point, so he's definitely not got enough money. So, let's check the next year. In 1999, it will be £5,885 again, but times the rate to the power 4. So in 1999, Kevin's investment will be worth this. Now the car will have depreciated in value one more time, so reduced by 20 more percent. So this time we do £39,500, the value of the car in 1995, times 0 0.8 to the power 4, for the four years from 1995 to 1998. This gives you a value of £16,179.20. So Kevin still doesn't have enough money for the car. We then just repeat this process over and over until Kevin has enough money. In the year 2000, we multiply by 1.05 to the power 5, which gives you this. And for the value of the car, we multiply by 0.8 to the power 5, which gives you this. So unfortunately, still not enough money. For 2001, it's 1.05 to the power 6, which is this. And the value of the car is times 0.8 to the power 6, which is this. So we're getting closer, but we still don't have enough money. 2002 would be times 1.05 to the power 7, which is this, and for the car's value we times by 0 0.8 to the power 7, which is this. So unfortunately still not enough, we're very very close, I'm sure he'd be able to find £3, but that's not the point of the question. So for 2003, multiply by 1.05 to the power 8, which is this, and for the car's value we times by 0 0.8 to the power 8, which gives you this. So now you can see the value of Kevin's investment is greater than the value of the car, therefore he can afford the purchase. So the answer to the question is 2003. Thank you for watching this video, I hope you found it useful. Check out the one I think you should watch next and subscribe so you don't miss out on future uploads.